This video will be our introduction to the nervous system and the material covered in this video is going to be absolutely critical that you understand as we move forward. Uh, it's going to be foundational and uh, if you don't learn this material, you're going to never have a chance at learning uh, the more complex stuff to come. So the nervous system is a system that allows us to gather information about our environment and then think about that information or interpret that information and then react to it. In other words, to move around, to talk. Uh, as I'm speaking to you, I'm using my nervous system uh, to think and to think about what I'm gonna say and then actually carry out saying it. And you're using your nervous system to hear what I'm saying, to see the words that are on the screen and to interpret that information and then also to write the materials that you're writing. And the nervous system, all the different systems of the body that we're looking at we're looking at specific cells that help them do their thing. The nervous system, the specialized cell of the nervous system are called neurons. Neurons have these parts that you're gonna to need to know. Dendrite, cell body, axon, and myelin sheath. You have this picture of a neuron on your study guide and we're gonna label it. So let's label the first thing. These things that are coming out of what we call the main part of the neuron, which is called the cell body, are the dendrites. So we have these dendrites that are these branches that come off of the cell body. We then also have inside the cell body, this is sort of the main part of this, so we have this large circular structure. What might that be? Obviously that's the nucleus. Now notice the other thing coming off the cell body besides these little branches called dendrites is this really long uh, structure that ends in branches. That is called the axon. It narrows from what's called the axon hillock. So we have the axon hillock which leads to the axon, and then we have the axon endings. Also want you to label that this, these structures is called myelin sheath, and then put a parenthesis and write insulation, like the insulation of a wire. I want you to start thinking about electrical signals being sent in our body. When I snap my fingers, so I want you to think about, you, know, you can do it now too, just snap your fingers. When you snap your fingers, how long does it take from when your brain thinks about snapping your fingers and say, okay, snap your fingers, to when you actually snap your fingers? The answer is, it doesn't seem like it takes, it's like almost instantaneous, yeah? How's that possible? What I want you to start thinking about is that there's electrical signals being sent from your brain to the muscles of your hand and arm, allowing you to actually snap your fingers. And those signals are moving at like the same speed, you just think of it kind of like uh, electrical signals like when you flip a light switch on. How long does it take for the electricity to go from through the light switch to the lights? It happens very quickly, right? So I want you to think about the same way, that we're gonna think of this like a wire, sending an electrical signal down to the ends here. So from the cell body, we have an electrical signal traveling here, and the myelin sheath acts like the rubber that surrounds an electrical wire and keeps that electricity flowing nicely and smoothly um, and keeps it from leaking out of the wire. In much the same way, that myelin sheath is going to make the signals nice and quick and crisp. This picture shows uh, the same idea, but in a little more detail. So you've got your cell body, all the main organelles are in there, not just the nucleus that we labeled, but you know, the, the rough and smooth ER, the Golgi, mitochondria, et cetera, right? All that's in there. Uh, then you have this long projection called the axon, which is myelinated, has that myelin sheath around it. And then it ends, what are called the axon endings. And notice that the axon endings end at the next neuron. So these would be the dendrites in the background there of the next neuron. There's its cell body, there's its axon. And what we're gonna see today is there's gonna be electrical signal sent. We're not gonna wrestle with what that electrical signal is until later, but for now, just take it on my, you know, kind of take it on faith. It's an electrical signal, and it gets to the end here. Now, notice that there's a gap between the axon endings of this neuron and the dendrites of another. They've, they've zoomed in on it right here. Right? You can see, so this would be like the axon endings of another neuron and the dendrites of this neuron, and there's a little gap there called a synapse. Now, the question is, well, if we have an electrical signal, and you're having that electrical signal travel through two wires and there's a gap, well, the electricity is not going to be able to flow. So what we're going to see is what happens is when the electrical signal gets to the end, a chemical signal is sent, we call them neurotransmitters, from one neuron to the next. And that then passes the message to the next neuron so it can send an electrical signal. So here, chemicals, neurotransmitters, to the next neuron, and then another electrical signal. And this is how it works. Here's a picture of a dendritic tree to give you an, an idea for how complex this is. This is the cell body. There'd be the axon going down that way. These are all the dendrites coming off on that side. Another picture showing us uh, the blue are the nuclei. The green are the plasma membranes. So you can see the axons going off in different directions here from each individual cell. Here's another picture that shows a little bit of the network. I think this is from a mouse uh, brain. Realize just in your brain you have 100 billion of these neuron cells we're looking at. 
100 billion. And so imagine how complex the connections are, the network is. These nodes will now look at the functions of these different things we've labeled. So the first one is dendrites. So the dendrites are here, remember, and their job is they receive incoming signals either from the environment, make a little note, the incoming signals might be from the environment, or they might be from another neuron, all right? They then will send that signal to the cell body, which may then initiate an action potential down the axon. The axon then carries that signal Okay, might write the word signal there, that electrical impulse, the signal. It's also going to be called an action potential. We'll wrestle with that again later when we actually look at what is this electrical signal. And it's going to send that all the way then down to the branches, to the ends. Uh, and here it's going to be converted into a chemical signal called a neurotransmitter. And make a little note, kind of in parentheses, to, to, to cross the synapse or to cross the gap. I want to use both those words, gap slash synapse. So the neurotransmitters will then cross the gap to the next neuron. The myelin sheath, think of it like the insulation on a wire. If you think about it, you have an electrical wire and you know, you've got the copper on the inside, let's say, and on the outside you have this, this rubber that keeps the electricity in the wire, keeps the wire safe to handle, but also it helps the efficiency of the wire. So the myelin sheath, same thing. It essentially covers our electrical wire, the axon, and allows the signal to travel quickly, more fast, okay? And the reason it's able to do that is it's able to essentially jump these spaces. We call them nodes of Ranvier, these spaces in between. We'll look at what that is in more detail when we actually look at what is the signal that's jumping, but for now we're just gonna leave it at that. But one thing I want you to see, notice these axons when they're myelinated, look how fast, 225 miles an hour. So when I think from my brain to my fingers, to snap my fingers, that signal, that electrical signal is sent at 225 miles an hour. And how far does that have to go? Well, in my body, maybe what, three, four feet? So three, and three, four feet, at, you know, 225, 225 miles an hour, that's gonna be like instantaneous, yeah? Now, without myelin sheath, look how slow it is. If you know someone that has MS, MS is an autoimmune disease where the myelin sheath is actually destroyed because the immune system starts destroying the cells that are producing it. And so it's this slow degenerative disease where uh, the nervous system essentially stops functioning properly because uh, the person's body cannot send signals quickly enough to actually be able to do the things that the person needs to do. That, by the way, is something we'll be looking at in all of our systems, is looking at diseases of the system, because as we understand the disease of the system, it'll help us understand how the system works in the first place. So MS is a good example of what happens when the myelin sheath doesn't function properly. Neurotransmitters are the chemicals that actually cross the gap, the synapse, between the axon endings of one neuron and the dendrites of the next neuron. Now, these um, neurotransmitters, some of them have names that you might have heard, heard of, like dopamine, okay? Maybe you've heard of that one. Uh, and so these chemicals are very powerful chemicals and they travel across this gap and then they actually then allow that electrical signal to pass from one neuron to the next. As a result, this is how the signal travels along a series of nerve cells or neurons, right? It travels as electrical, then chemical to the next neuron, then electrical, then chemical to the next neuron, eventually getting to our effector cell. Make a little note next to that, what are our effector cells? Are either gonna be muscle cells or gland cells? So when I send the signals to snap my fingers, the effector cells that I'm stimulating are actually muscle cells in my hand, right? Here's another kind of simplified picture for us to, to, to think about. So you've got your dendrites here. They're receiving some signal from another axon, maybe, another neuron. It then tells the cell to initiate an electrical signal down the axon to the axon endings where there's a little gap, a little synapse, where the chemicals, those neurotransmitters, cross the gap to the next neuron. 
then simulates that neuron, right? The dendrites of that neuron. Here's a zoomed in picture then of that little gap. And so we've got our synapse, the electrical signal's traveling through here, but it can't just jump across the gap, right? You have a wire that's been cut. You can't have the electricity jump across. So you have to have these vesicles fused. They release chemicals, those neurotransmitters across the gap. They then attach to receptors on the next neuron, stimulate it, and tell it to send a signal. And this will make a little more sense if we actually wrestle with, you know, what is this electrical signal and how, how do these neurotransmitters work? We'll look at that later. For now, we're just kind of laying the groundwork, the basics. So here's a picture. This is actually a cross section with a scanning electron microscope of a nerve ending. So these are the axon endings, this in green here. And they've been cut to show you all these uh, things in blue and orange. These are little vesicles of all the neurotransmitters just waiting to fuse and release their chemicals across the synapse. Now a single neuron, like this one here, can actually be attached to multiple other neurons and it can be attached to several neurons itself. This is how, if you want to make a little note, this is how we get complex thought and complex behavior. Have you ever smelled something and it like creates a picture in your mind of maybe like a specific person like, oh, you start thinking about your grandfather or you even get like emotional maybe about it. How is just the smell able to stimulate so many things at once? It's because our brain, those 100 billion neurons, they're all wired together in different ways because one neuron can have multiple connections. So while that signal is being sent to one part of your brain where you're actually processing what is this smell, another part is also going to maybe an emotional center of your brain, maybe an emotional response, maybe it reminds you of your grandfather, uh, maybe it's going to the, the visual processing part of your brain and you're actually conjuring up that mental picture that you're seeing your grandfather, right? And so a single neuron can have multiple connections. That's what allows for the complex behavior that we have. An action potential is carried across uh, the gap, that synapse, by the neurotransmitter. So I believe that you have this picture on your study guide. Uh, add any labels that you're missing. It's a very simplified picture. To show you the basics, we have the axon of one nerve. There's the axon ending. The vesicles of the neurotransmitters are then fusing and releasing those neurotransmitters across the synapse. And they're attaching to the receptors on the dendrite of the next nerve cell. Then you have the electrical signal. It might be a guide to maybe draw the arrow down and say electrical signal. Then maybe drawing another one down here and saying electrical signal. That's it for the, the material that's really gonna be like essential for this unit. I just wanna share something else that's kind of interesting for you. The axons, the myelin on the axon is sort of a white appearance. And so that means that when we see bundles of axons, which we call nerves, those are white in appearance. Whereas the cell bodies, you know, the dendrites, they tend to be more gray. So this is important for you to know, like for the dissection and just kind of in general, when you see gray matter versus white matter. So here's a cross section of someone's spinal cord, right? So think about your spinal cord in your back. All this white matter, these are all axons that are going you know, further down the person's body or going back up to the brain. These are the wires, if you will. Then the gray matter, those are the cell bodies of the neurons that are actually controlling things sort of at that slice of a person, right? So let's say this is in like your very lower back. Well, these would be uh, the neurons that are connecting to maybe your legs and other parts in that region of your body. When we look at someone's brain, what we'll see, this is a picture of a preserved brain, is you'll see the white matter and the gray matter. And notice the pattern that we see, is the gray matter is along the outside part of the brain. And one of the reasons why humans are capable of such complex thought is notice how folded our brain is. So we have more surface area where you can have more gray matter on the outside. Then also notice that the brain actually is separated into two hemispheres, two halves. But those halves can communicate through this massive bridge of white matter. See all that white matter picture? When you see that white matter, think of just like the, the axons. Think of the bundle of axons connecting all the neurons over here together with each other. Right, you can see that white matter going here and here, but also connecting them with the other half of the brain. We call this huge bridge of white matter, we call it the corpus callosum. That'll be a term that we'll be learning. So there's a lot of terms in this unit. There's gonna be a lot of material coming at you. I hope that uh, you understand this material and we can move forward in the lecture next time. Uh, I hope that was helpful and I'll see you next time.